nice little executive toy. Something to watch during a boring meeting. It just keeps on running, but there doesn't seem to be anything powering it. Of course, as every executive knows, you can't get something for nothing, and this is no exception. The wheel contains small permanent magnets. Now, as the wheel passes the middle, the circuit inside detects it and switches on the battery. That activates the electromagnet, which gives the wheel a little push, just enough to keep it running. Now, could you have figured that out, I mean, without opening it up? I know I couldn't, but that's exactly what Discover asked two teams of students to do. And they had to do it on a very special machine. Welcome to Discover's Perpetual Motion Machine Contest. This machine and uh, this contest is the brainchild of uh, Dr. David uh, Jones. Contest chairman, Nobel Prize winning scientist, Dr. Glenn Seaborg. Uh, the contestants today include three students from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology and three students from the University of California at Berkeley. The inventor, Dr. David Jones. First of all, in case there should be any mistake, perpetual motion is impossible and I am a self-confessed fraud and charlatan. Um, this machine gets energy from somewhere, I'm not saying where, and turns it into rotation of the wheel somehow, I'm not saying how. It has fooled a number of people in the past, but I think this is the end of the road. Now, the inventors of the past never would admit it was the end of the road for perpetual motion. The archives of science are full of their weird and impossible devices. David Jones is a different kind of inventor. He's a working scientist from Newcastle, England, with a well-developed sense of humor. The machines which he builds in his kitchen are not supposed to revolutionize the auto industry or solve the energy crisis. They're more like scientific conjuring tricks designed to fool an audience. When we first met him, one of his machines had just defeated an entire engineering convention. Nobody could figure it out. So we threw down the gauntlet. Build a machine to fool the best science students in the United States. As the machine took shape, we visited his Newcastle kitchen for a sneak preview. Dr. Jones was taking no chances. He refused to tell us the secret. That way we couldn't be tempted to help the students out. His basic strategy is to make it look obvious. There seem to be so many ways of moving the wheel. As the machine gathered speed, he pointed out the problems the contestants would be facing. There are plenty of entirely reasonable methods one might imagine this machine works by. Are there photo cells in those boxes? There might be. These little gadgets going up and down. Do they drive the wheel or are they driven by it? little things that go round the boxes. Do they have anything in them? The pipes here. Do they convey a gas? Or are they, as quite a lot of the machine is, pure window dressing there to delude the unwary? But how unwary would the challengers be? Next stop, Berkeley, California. I am now prepared to evade any questions that the teams may wish to put to me. What's the longest time that the machine has actually been running or been continuously operating on public display? I have had it running for three weeks. Well, you said we couldn't touch the machine, but I wonder just how strict that is going to be. You can get, you can get within a thousandth of an inch of it, but you mustn't touch it. Could you tell me how much the machine costs? A few hundred pounds in materials, thousands in expenditure of agony. <laughs> 
The teams retired to separate rooms to plan their strategies and draw up lists of equipment to be used when they were allowed access to the machine, which remained well guarded by the inventor. A piece of soft iron. Cigarettes. Compass. Water. <laughs> a lab jack and an infrared camera system. A hair dryer or hair blower. Uh, an oscilloscope. A uh, radio. Uh, pepperoni pizza. No takeout. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Berkeley had first access. Nothing happening whatsoever. They quickly ruled out the pipes and just as quickly discovered some magnetic fields, first with a simple compass and then with a sophisticated magnetometer. They covered the light sensitive photocells and then timed the machine. There was no effect, the photocells were fake. Then, a breakthrough. It's purely electrical, too. And the microphone acted like a radio antenna, picking up not sound, but radio waves. The MIT team found the same thing, this time using an ordinary transistor radio. The two gray boxes were obviously doing something, but it didn't stop a check for the conjurer's assistant, perhaps. Even though the teams operated independently, their test procedures were quite similar. I don't think there's anything coming out of there. Just, uh... Although MIT spent a lot of time investigating the plate mechanism, something Berkeley had dismissed by doing a few calculations. Access time was an hour per team. Then they had to present their results. I'd like to call first on the Berkeley team. Thank you, Dr. Seaborg. Uh, Dr. Jones, it's our uh, conviction that your marvelous machine here is actually a fairly simple classic electric motor. It has pulsed electromagnets in the two boxes on the vertical columns. Berkeley claims the machine works like the executive toy, which gets a little push from the electromagnet inside. In this case, they say, the electromagnet is hidden in the box on the left with the fake photocells. MIT has the same idea. Electromagnets in this box and in that box. This rod, we believe, is a controller, not through the plate, but somehow through these, um, the main structure of the mechanism, perhaps through wires into this box, which contains... But unlike Berkeley, they think the rods and plates are involved as well, as some kind of control mechanism. Well, um, my decision is that the Berkeley team have won this contest. Um, they have located the mechanism entirely in those two boxes, whereas the MIT team implicated um, that box as well and some of the linkages. Um, and I think I can show you um, how the thing works with the aid of a... Now watch closely. Dr. Jones takes the boxes containing the electromagnets off the machine to show that they do indeed work like that executive toy. But... Some of you may have noticed that the wheel has not stopped. <laughs> Besides this, there is a second mechanism in the wheel, which nobody came ever close to guessing. And as far as I'm concerned, that's a little bit of international fraud which is going to triumph. So... Of course, we should have known that even a scientific conjurer always keeps something up his sleeve. So the trophies went to the team that was at least half right. Yeah. <laughs>